Mr. Baldwin, it's absolutely time we get this video done. Let's crank this one out. All right. Okay, we got two pages of learning targets here, and we're all talking about absolute dating this time, okay? So look at the learning targets, take them back, look at the other slides, compare them, see what you're learning as you go, okay? Here's right. page one, here's page two. Okay. Make, sure you, make sure you pause them, get to know them, spend some time with them. There you go. So the difference with absolute dating and relative dating, which we talked about before when we were talking about original horizontality and law of superposition, mm -hmm. inclusions, all those things, is that with absolute dating, we're actually going to give an age in years to something. We're not just saying older, younger. Mm -hmm. We are saying the actual number of years something has been around. Exactly. Okay. So we're given solid dates. So we're saying the Earth is 4.6 billion years old. Dinosaurs went extinct 65 million years ago. Okay, cool. Okay, so to start this, we got to start with some basics. We're doing some basic chemistry. Okay, parts of the atom. A little bit of a review here from Chem 1. Absolutely. Right, so go. inside the nucleus, you got protons and neutrons. Mm -hmm. Both of them have mass of one atomic mass unit, AMU. Protons have the positive charge. Neutrons have a zero charge. Okay, and outside the nucleus, we have electrons, which have an almost zero AMU, and they have a negative one charge. Okay, and here's the big thing, uh, an isotope. An isotope is when you have the same element but different number of neutrons. Okay, so one popular example we'll be talking about is like carbon-12 and carbon-14. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're both carbon, but carbon-14 has two extra neutrons present. Okay. Same number of protons. Same, same number of protons. Same atom. Yep. Just a different number of neutrons. Because mm -hmm, protons define the atom. Okay, and we're going to be able to use the changes in the number of neutrons and how long that takes mm -hmm. to give an absolute number of years that something has been around. Yep. Good. Let's move on. Okay, so we're going to be talking about radioactive decay. This is what we use to determine the age of the materials in years. This gives us that absolute date. Okay, so we've got nuclei that are doing something kind of cool here. What are mm -hmm. they doing? They're breaking down spontaneously. They're radioactive nuclei. Okay, you're thinking like Homer Simpson in the, nu uh, in the nuclear reactor moving all kinds of glowing stuff but not quite glowing and not that cool. All right, so <laughs> by this we mean that nuclei by themselves, without stirring, without heating, mm -hmm. nothing is done to them to make them break down. Mm -hmm. They are breaking down. Mm -hmm. They are radioactive. Mm -hmm. They're not very stable. They don't like being what they are, so they're going to break down to something more stable. Okay. So the example, again, we talked about carbon-14 isn't very stable. It's going to spontaneously break down or break apart until it becomes carbon-12. So change into carbon-12. Mm -hmm. We've got two other terms on here. We have the terms of the original mm -hmm. atom, which is the parent atom, mm -hmm. and after it's radioactively decayed, mm -hmm. after it's broken down, we're going to call that the daughter atom or mm -hmm. the daughter isotope. Yeah, so it starts as a parent and then breaks down, becomes more stable to a daughter. Okay. okay? Okay, so a big term we use is the half-life. This is what helps us figure out, <coughs> excuse me, uh, helps us figure out the uh, absolute age of the rock. Okay, so the half-life, if we're looking for a definition, mm -hmm. is the amount of time it takes the original number of parent atoms mm -hmm. to radioactively decay or break down mm -hmm. into the daughter. Okay. So half of the original atoms break down into daughters. Mm -hmm in one half-life. Okay, and some common times, there's some common isotopes that we use, carbon-14 like we told you guys before. It's used for a lot of organic materials and it's got actually a relatively short half-life, only mm -hmm. 5,700 years. So when geologists are actually trying to age date something or absolute date something, mm -hmm. they're going to choose the isotopes to look for based on how old they think that material is. Mm -hmm. If they think it's an older material, something in the order of billions of years old, they're probably going to use isotopes of uranium. Mm -hmm. If they think it's young, as you said, carbon-14, mm -hmm. they might use potassium argon, they might use strontium rubidium. Mm -hmm. All right, so they'll choose different sets of isotopes depending on the age they think something is. Yep. Good. Okay, so when we use this half-life, we use this nice little graph going on here. And just again, remember the parent was that unstable radioactive isotope, mm -hmm. daughter, it's that more stable resulting of the decay of the parent. Yeah, so let's look at the graph. <coughs> Two axes, of course. Up on the y-axis, you've got the proportion of the atoms that are left. And on the x-axis, you have the number of half-lives that have passed by. Mm -hmm. So two curves on here. Let's talk about the blue one, because that's the kind of most common one. OK, so we're looking at our parent isotope. So yeah. that's the unstable radioactive isotope. Right. So originally, before anything's broken down, 
we're going to have 100% parent isotope. Okay. okay. No half-lives have gone by, no radioactivity, nothing's broken down yet. And after one half-life, mm -hmm. that original 100%, half of it's gone. So now there's... 50%. 50%. By definition, one half-life has gone by, 50% of the parent is left. If we wait a second <clears throat> half-life, mm -hmm. that 50% went down to... 25%. And if we wait a third half-life, the 25% went down to... 12 and a half percent. And if we wait a fourth half-life, that 12 and a half percent went down to... Six and six point two five quarter. Yeah. Okay, and we could keep going for a long time here, mm -hmm. dividing in half, dividing in half. But would we ever get to zero? We would never, because if you always take half of something, you'll never you theoretically never get to get zero. Get down to zero. All mm -hmm. right. So that's that curve, the blue curve. The red curve on here is showing the number of daughter atoms. So you mm -hmm. start out with a hundred percent parent and zero daughter. Mm -hmm. And they're going to cross at 50 50. Mm -hmm. So after and one then, half life, you'll have 50 daughter right. and 50 parent. Yeah. Okay. And after two, you'll have. Then you'll have 75, 75 daughter. And 25. And then, yeah, and then 80, 87.5. And yeah, okay. it gets, yeah, keep going. We got to make sure that they correct this little error, though, on their chart. So on your chart, it says where we have a zero here, it mm -hmm. says one. It goes one, two, three, four, five. You need to change that so it's zero, one, two, three, and four. Yep, so make sure to cross this out and change those numbers right there yep. for you. Good. That's a good chart for them to look back on as they're trying to solve these kinds of problems. So let's yeah. go through a, a sample problem here for them. Okay, so strontium 90. Yeah. Okay, it's an amazingly short half life, 28 years. Good. Okay, so after 28 years, we're going to have half of our parent isotope right. remaining. Okay, so that's how many half lives have passed after 112 years. Okay. Okay, so if I do my math correct and I divide 28 and 112, it actually comes out to exactly 4, doesn't it? It does. Perfect. Okay, and if you think about it too, like 28, double that is going to be... 56. And double that again is going to be... 112. 112. Okay. Cool. So I've decayed it once, so I've gone through one half life. To get to 28 years. Mm -hmm. If I decay it again... To get to 56. Okay, and then decay it two more times, or... Yeah, two more times. Yeah, <laughs> to get up to 112. Perfect. So it's okay. gone through four half lives. Right. And it says, what percentage of strontium 90 is left after 112 years? So I know that's four half lives. Right. So after one half life, I have 50 percent. After a second half life, 25. Mm -hmm. Third half life, 12, 12 and, and a half. half. And fourth half life, six, six and a quarter. Six point two five. Yeah. So the answer to the sec second question: six point two five percent of the original strontium 90. That parent isotope. Would be remaining. Okay. And the rest of it would be daughter atoms, right? Yeah, everything else would be daughter atoms okay. at that point. All right, good. So now we're going to make this a little bit more interesting because there are actually different kinds of radioactive decay. We've mm -hmm. been talking about it as if it was just one type of decay. Mm -hmm. But realistically, we now know that atoms, when they do decay radioactively, do it in several different ways. So we'll talk about some of the main ones here. Mm. We'll start with alpha decay. Okay, so alpha decay involves releasing an alpha particle. Okay. They define an alpha particle as having two protons, two neutrons, and it's a he atom, or helium. Helium, helium atom, okay. Yeah. So we'll release a helium atom from the parent isotope. Okay. okay, so I end up starting with a parent, I release a helium atom, and I'm left with a daughter, and then a little bit of energy kicks off too. Okay, so the helium atom is, is the product of the radioactive decay. Yep. And it comes actually from inside the nucleus of the parent atom, mm -hmm. and it's released. Okay, and if we think about the mass and the atomic number, the atomic mass is going to decrease by four. Okay. Because I lost two protons, two neutrons, both of them have mass. Mm -hmm. Okay, and atomic number, which is just the number of protons, since I lost two, decreases yep. by two. So what was originally the parent atom mm -hmm. was a certain element, mm -hmm. but the daughter is going to be a different element oh. because it has two fewer protons. Okay. So you've changed a parent into a daughter and they're two different elements. Okay. Which is a little different than when we were talking about carbon 14 and 12. Yeah. That was still the same element. Mm -hmm. It was just a different isotope. Mm -hmm. Okay. So next kind of decay we're going to talk about is going to be beta decay. This is kind of an interesting one because this one kind of blows away some of the things that you were taught in earlier chemistry classes. Yeah, this one's this really weird. This is not a mistake. It mm -hmm. says that there's an electron that was released from the nucleus. Okay. Well, electrons should be in the electron cloud, but in fact... If you look at a neutron, mm -hmm. a neutron is actually a proton with the electron together. Yeah. Because neutrons don't have a charge, it's actually a positive and a negative, they cancel each other out. Right. So in beta decay, what happens is that neutron mm -hmm. releases an electron, mm -hmm. which leaves the atom, 
which leaves behind now a new proton. Oh. So the atomic mass doesn't change because the mass of an electron is almost zero, mm -hmm. but the atomic number of the daughter element is actually increased by one mm -hmm. because that neutron changed into a proton. Yeah, so by losing an electron, you kind of gain a proton in there. Gain a proton. So mm -hmm. again, the daughter atom is a different element than mm -hmm. the parent atom was. It has one atomic number higher. There you go. Okay. Okay, Don't next. Tell Mr. Simon and Mr. Holly we told you that. Do but. not show no, them this video. Uh -uh. Okay, next type, it's actually kind of the opposite. Okay, yeah. it's one electron is captured into the nucleus. Right. Okay, again, a nucleus, it's, it is in the nucleus. Mm -hmm. Okay, so picture it like this your atomic mass isn't going to change. Right. Because you're just gaining an electron, no mass, or negligible mass. And your atomic number is going to decrease by one because you're taking a proton, adding an electron to it, canceling out the charge, and making it a neutron. So in this case, the proton changes into a neutron mm -hmm. by adding the electron. Perfect. Great. Got it. Okay. So that was all different types of radioactive ways to determine the age of various rocks. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is another type to find absolute ages for different things based on tree rings. Good. Okay. And this is actually near and dear to my heart. This is like what my master's thesis was about. Awesome. I studied trees for like three or four years. It was great. <laughs> Okay. The concept goes, for every year of growth on a tree is one year, or sorry, is one ring in the tree. Mm -hmm. okay? And the wider the rings, the better the growing conditions. The okay. smaller the rings, or the narrower the rings, the worse it was for growth. Yeah. Okay? And like trees all exhibit just about the same like width and narrow based on each of the conditions for the year. Mm -hmm. okay? And some of the older trees that we see are actually found out in Wisconsin, Wisconsin uh, California. Um, it's called the bristlecone pine. And they go up to 5,000 years old. That's an old, old tree. Mm -hmm. But I think it's really important that we tell students here that you don't have to actually cut the tree down mm -hmm. to look at all of the rings. You can do a tree core, mm -hmm. which you're using a coring instrument mm -hmm. to extract a really small piece, like the size of a pencil, right? Yeah, and like you basically are taking out a piece of pencil from the tree. The first uh, scientist who found the bristlecone pine thought he was doing it wrong because he kept taking out these pencils and was finding 5,000 years. And he cut down the tree because he oh, thought he was doing it wrong. No. Turned out he cut down the oldest living thing on earth. Ouch. <laughs> All right. So let's see how we're using tree rings to do correlation. Yeah. So just like the video we saw before when we were correlating rock layers based on the layers we had present, we can do the same thing with tree rings. So you're using tree rings from different places just like we used rock outcrops from mm -hmm. different places. Yeah. So say we have a living tree. And we've got a windmill in this picture they have. Mm -hmm. And it's made of similar tree or similar uh, trees that were growing in the area. Okay. You can look at those patterns of wide rings to narrow rings and match them up, kind of overlap them and correlate them, just like you do with the rock layers, to be able to make a date on when that tree was alive. So you're saying that rings from one sample of wood to another sample of wood that show the same pattern mm -hmm. Are going to have formed or grown at the same time. In Absolutely, the same year. yeah. Okay, got it. And then you can keep building them back and basically putting together a puzzle, looking at the overlapping layers of those rings, and basically put together, you know, a record of all the different growth that you had in the area. That's pretty cool. So we would get actual ages out of that. So absolute dating using mm -hmm. correlation of tree rings. Yep. Good. All right. You think they're ready for a quiz? Let's do this. They got it. All right. Jump out to your class homepage. Take your quiz. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. See you guys.